here to explain. Mark Mahaney, Mahaney of uh, Evercore ISI. He's got a price target at 375 on the stock. Mark, great to see you as always. Thanks for, for joining us. I mean, you, you, you've done a big survey, and uh, I guess the, the, the key takeaway is you really feel Spotify is, is the leader in, in their space. Yeah, Wilfred, I think that's the right setup. Uh, and you're also right that this is a dislocated stock. I think it's a dislocated high quality stock, almost uh, off uh, off almost 40 percent from its highs. But our annual survey, this is the ninth time we've run this, uh, consistently has shown increased usage, reliance by consumers worldwide on uh, Spotify. In the U.S., it has two and a half times as many users as the closest, uh, second closest competitor. In this case, that's Apple Music. In the UK, that lead is like three to three to four X greater than Amazon Music and Apple Music. So it's it, in our book, it's winning the music streaming wars. And then they've layered in podcasting for which we find increasing popularity and increasing usage just makes the use case, the value proposition above uh, Spotify stronger. So it's the question of when the gross margins and the profits of this company start to tip. We think that will happen in a reasonable uh, short term. That's why we like it here while it's dislocated. And, and part of the reason you think that can and will happen uh, is that you think they've got a lot of pricing power. Yeah, so this is the first time ever that the company has started to pull uh, pricing as a lever. Uh, they've done this over the last uh, six to nine months in the U.S., in Western Europe, and in other parts of the world, in Japan. Uh, just like Netflix started doing this in 2014, Amazon way back then, too. They started increasing the price of their basic subscription plans or Prime, and they were able to do it successfully multiple times. We think Spotify has that ability to do it, too. At the end of the day, this is the world's music library on your phone at beck and call for you know 9.99 a month uh, or cheaper and i think that means the company's got a lot of pricing power and that usually translates into revenue growth acceleration and margin expansion which usually is a great backdrop for stocks so we we did a lot of teases of the abil the billion reasons you like spotify I, I guess it's in reference mark to a billion users yeah. which you think this company could have it, by when? And that seems pretty aggressive for a company that has, what, 350 or so 50. million users right now? Yeah, so it's not an easy one. This is what the CEO and the founder, uh, co-founder Daniel Eck had announced as the company's goal for 2025. He thought they could get to a billion monthly average users. I think that's possible. They've also launched into 86 new country markets uh, this year. And so, yeah, if you layer in more markets, that can get you to that goal. Well, what I found interesting is, all right, we started to work the math on that. If you get close to that, I think we're at uh, we're still south of 950 million that year. But if you get reasonably close to a billion, that kicks off uh, as much as uh, 11 billion in gross profit or over 3 billion in cash flow and EBITDA. And that, I think, uh, allows you to see a doubling in the stock in three years because we're going to be discounting that 25 scenario in 2024, which is three years from now. So that's the math we wanted to go through in the exercise. If, Daniel, you really can get your billion subs and we think you can get reasonably close to it, what's that worth? And for investors, it's the doubling in three. That's a great entry point on a stock. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.